Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I have a very special guest with me today, a good friend. And if you are a regular uh, BevCam viewer, you will recognize Bob Butterworth. Thanks for inviting me, Walt. Glad, glad to have We've you. We've been Bob. talking about this for two years. And I don't, you know, these are trade secrets, Bob. Oh. These are trade secrets. And, and remember, I'm interviewing you. This is my show. Yeah, this is going to be when, tough for me. When you, when you interview me on your show, then you, you set the rules right now. All okay, right. buddy? Okay, so we got, we got the ground rules set, right? Okay. Um, Bob is a, uh, if you've been watching BevCam for anywhere in the last 10 years, you've seen Bob. Bob is a very prolific producer here uh, on BevCam. Um, he's had uh, Bob's The Name, Tennis Is My Game, that's one of his shows. Bob's Songbook is another one. And the infamous Senior Moments. With a question mark. With a question mark. A uh, very, very popular show. And uh, Bob's had on some very interesting guests over the years. But what do we know about what's behind the man, the host? What is behind? Where, what is there? Bob Butterworth. We need to know more about Bob. And we're going to rectify that today. And we're going to ask Bob to talk about himself and his history, which is very, very interesting, I might add. Now, l let's just kind of do the bare bones here so that the audience... Uh, you were born Beverly, Massachusetts, uh, exactly one year after Pearl Harbor was attacked. Uh, my mother said I was a second attack. A second. <laughs> OK. All right. It's going to be that kind of interview, folks. So uh, now you you um, uh, you went to Beverly. You went to St. John's prep. Right. Yeah. And even before that, now you all your life, you've been uh, a gifted athlete. Uh, and you played in sports, uh, uh, specifically baseball uh, and tennis. Uh, now, tell us about your baseball career. You, you, were, uh, you were a little leaguer. Tell us about your time in the Little League. Well, I started in the Little League at age nine, and I played for the Yankees. And on that team, we had a very, very famous, fabulous baseball player, uh, starting his baseball career, Danny Murphy. Uh huh. And so I played with Danny, uh, Little League. And then when we were around 14, uh, myself, Danny, Jerry Palazzi, and Bob Wallace, Bob Wallace uh, ran Dawson's for years. Yep. We would practice from 9 to 12 every morning in the summer. Wow. So you got pretty okay. proficient. Yeah, we got pretty good, except yeah. Danny was better than all of us. Okay. In fact, <laughs> in, at St. John's, uh, Danny signed for the largest bonus in the history of baseball in 1960. At that time, it was 135000 A week later, he was starting in right field for the Chicago Cubs. Wow. Now, in, in, uh, at St. John's Prep... Uh, you you starred in uh, in football and baseball. Tell us about your St. John's Prep uh, 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 sports exploits. Well, I was a better uh, baseball than than football player. I, I pitched and played first base at St. John's, and I quarterback did all the kicking, the punting, the kicking off, the extra points. Uh, well, they didn't even need eleven men on the field with you <laughs> with you out there, did they? <laughs> And uh, so then um, I, I went on to college and... Now, where did you go to college? Undergraduate, you went to... I went to East Stroudsburg State, State College. Which it's is, now a university. Which is in Pennsylvania, right? Right. It's five miles from the Delaware Water Gap. Okay, we know about that. And... Uh, now, what kind of a degree did you, did you get from, from East I got a degree in health education. Health education. But it was really health and physical education. Okay. And so tell us about uh, East Stroud, Stroudsburg State. Uh, well, first of all, they uh, ran out of dorm space. So 43 of the freshman guys had to stay out at the Delaware Water Gap at Fred Waring Summer Workshop. Fred Waring uh, is in oh. the Hall of uh, Walk, Walk of Fame in Hollywood, in Hollywood. in and two different categories. Okay. We're going to get to Fred. Oh. Okay. So hold, right. that, hold that thought. 
We're going to get to Fred. So, so the 42 of you were out there. Well, tell, tell us about that. You, you uh, and, and Fred Waring and his band were, were practicing there, as, as I recall. Is that what you told me before? Right. The Pennsylvanians, which were made up of Miss America con, uh, uh, ladies, uh, he would hire them. And they were called the Pennsylvanians, and he barnstormed the country, even into Alaska, on a bus. And he was on the Ed Sullivan Show, Mr. Miss, Miss, Miss Music. Okay. And also he ran uh, summer workshops for music teachers in, in, in the area, Pennsylvania. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, Chris, I'd like you to put up the... Uh the picture that I asked you to put up, you know which one. All right, there we go. Yeah, Fred Waring Fred, and the Pennsylvanians. In, and uh, it's the in, Pennsylvanians lived in the dorms on the third floor. The guys were on the second floor, and the first floor was a studio. Uh -huh. So I could walk out of my room and go... Only a few steps. And then you'd see Fred. And there's a door there, and we could go into the studio and watch uh, all the rehearsals as long as we... And did you get to, to talk to Fred Waring? Oh, I got to know Fred uh, quite well, because well, well. I, I, I went to more rehearsals than any, anybody else. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, th that, the picture we showed before, if people didn't recognize it, that was an album cover, actually. And you can, you can see on the top of the car, you can see the round uh, scratch marks there that where the record was. And I, I want to point out to, to, the, to, the, to our generation, Bob, it's in hi-fi, high fidelity, which was, <laughs> which was a big thing back in the 50s, uh, uh, high fidelity. So. Well, but, he was on the radio uh, for years and then, uh, then branched into television on his bus. Like I said, he traveled around the country. Uh, Different schools, churches, yep, whatever, and was, you know, like Lawrence Welk in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, people don't remember um, up today. Don't remember him, but uh, back in the day, he was very well known. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, so. You're at East Stroudsburg State, and, and uh, you're, you're hobnobbing with, uh, with uh, Fred Waring. And uh, tell us some of, the, some of the other things that went on there at East Stroudsburg State, sports-wise? Well, what one, uh, uh, before I get there, right across the street from the uh, workshop was the oldest jazz club in the United States, the Deerhead Inn. Uh-huh. And Jackie Gleason and Art Carney, after the Saturday night, stints in New York would drive up to the Deerhead Inn, carouse around, shoot pool or whatever. And I shot pool on the same table as Jackie Gleason. With Jackie Gleason or no, just on the no, same just table? just on the same table. Oh, and you walked the same floor he walked, right? And right <laughs> down the hill, uh, about 200 yards, uh, was the Glen, uh, Glenwood uh, hotel, and I saw the uh, Four Seasons in Frankie Valley wow. early, uh, perform, early and yeah. I, 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 I was about 30 yards away from them on a fabulous Saturday night. The moon was out, the temperature was right. There uh, should be a song about it that. It was a <laughs> fa fabulous experience. Yeah. Now, uh, so... Uh, uh, Sports-wise, in in at oh, East I, uh, more I baseball. I played baseball, but uh, not football. I can't yeah. remember the first day baseball. Uh, the baseball coach sat us down and he says, "Guys, this is the way it is. There's baseball. There's your studies, and there's your social life. You got time for two." Make your choice and make it now. <laughs> you know, just like Brother Phelan. Uh, there you go. You know, op opening words. There you go. There you go. Yes, yeah, you told me that story. Maybe we'll have time later on for you to, 
to to relate that story again. So you you did get a degree from East Straub, and what now? What yeah, did you do on the, right? ba- on the baseball team? At one time, I was uh, seventh in the nation in earned run average. Okay, so you pitched. I pitched. Uh, I pitched in two national tournaments, um, and one day we were playing Cornell. Opened up the season and. The coach took me out after seven innings. I gave up two hits, no runs. And after the game, the coach said, uh, see that guy over in the stands? Uh, he's a brave scout. He, want, he, he wants to talk to you. So over I went. And you could always tell these guys. Yeah. Straw hats. Yeah. Tweed sport coats. Wow. Clipboard. Stopwatch. Just like in the movies. <laughs> Just like in the movies. And of course, there were a ton of them at St. John's uh, uh, when when we were playing St. Mary's in Lynn because Tony Canigliaro played for St. Mary's oh. and Murphy it would be pitching against uh, Tony. And we uh, we averaged 15 scouts per game. Wow. Uh, I didn't know they kept statistics oh, like that. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm talking to him and he, and he says he... Uh, he signed Hank Aaron. Yeah. I said, unbelievable. That's great. He says, well, so, so, but I missed Ernie Banks in the same. There he covered go. the Negro Leagues. Great, great Cubs okay, player. So Ernie anyway, Banks, I, yeah. uh, uh, I decided not, not, not to go that route. Uh, no, they, well, weren't why, pay, why they, did, they weren't paying any money. And I had to kick around in the minus three or four years maybe. And Wow. At the time, the Braves had Warren Spawn, Lou Burdett, Johnny Sane, and some other guy. And to break into break yeah. into break so into you, that lineup uh, would have been a little tough. Little tough. So you decided, uh, okay. So um, what, out of East Straub's, what what happened there? What did you? Uh, well, I did, was also uh, president of the uh, uh, what do you call it? The the athletes. The, the sports, um, I know what you were. You were president of the Varsity Club. Varsity Club. Yes. And the predecessor, who was one of my teammates on the baseball team, was Bill Lewis. And Bill Lewis went on to be Herschel Walker's backfield coach, head coach of Colorado, East Carolina, and Georgia Tech. And while he was at East Carolina, he got the uh, award for Division I Football Coach of the Year. He then went on to the Miami Dolphins. He was a bas- uh, b- uh, backfield coach there and ended up his career as assistant athletic director at Notre Dame. Okay. Fabulous Excellent. individual. All right. Well, we want to cover a lot here, so uh, let's, let's move on. So uh, out, of, out of college, what, 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 what did you do out of college? You had the degree. Okay, I went, uh, I, I was teaching physical education um, and a couple of schools what, 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 in the, my, uh, Eastern, I mean, uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania was my first job. Uh-huh. Then shortly after that, I ended up at Eastern Pennsylvania, and Larry Holmes was one of my students, the heavyweight champion of the world. So, th- so he was one of your students in what? In health? Well, I ran an adapted physical education program for special needs students. Yeah. And what they would do in the regular phys ed classes, if you weren't dressed, okay, uh, in your gym stuff, they would send you to me. Uh-huh. And so a lot of times Larry, Larry didn't want to do re- regular physical education. And he was what? Was he in high school or college? He or was what? in high school. He was in high school. Now, who's that? That's Larry. That's Larry. And let me just, uh, Larry Holmes, uh, he was a boxer from 73 to 2002, 30, 29 years. When I had him, he was a golden, uh, golden, uh, golden gloves, gloves uh, yeah. uh, 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 champion. He worked three jobs. He, he had a large family. They, they didn't have money. And um, he would also spar with uh, Mahalad Ali because Mahalad Ali's uh, camp was up in the Poconos in the eastern. Was well, a let me tell you a fact ride. here. Let me, let me tell you a fact. Uh, he's considered to be one of the greatest heavyweight boxers. And um, he won 
his first 48 professional bouts, and, and he had victories over Norton, Muhammad Ali, Ernie Shavers, and these guys are former. These are, and he fell one short of, uh, of matching Rocky Marciano's 49 and 0, and he lost. Do you know who he lost to in 85? Uh, Spinks. Michael Spinks, you're right on, yeah. And, uh, and he, or he would have matched, uh, matched uh, he tried several comebacks, uh, as you know, and he, he faltered on all of those. Well, he comebacks. also uh, is a very serious diabetic, and he's uh -huh. almost died a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're there, and you're, um, you are uh, teaching, and Larry Holmes is, uh, is one of your students. Um, uh, so kind of advance from that. What, what I happened? had one other uh, student who could have been very famous. He, he was uh, mentally challenged, and he broke all the regional 100-yard dash records in the country. Um, and the school wanted him to go out to Los Angeles for the Special Olympics. And so I trained him for that, and I had his times down so he would, would have broken the world record. And he, at the last minute, he decided not to go. He didn't want to be around with all these kids because he was 19, which is, you know, wow. understandable. Yeah. But he he would he would have he he would have probably been uh, broken the world record for Special Olympics in the hundred yard dash. And what what year what time frame was this, Bob? Uh, this was in the uh, late sixties. Late sixties, okay. But right out of Strasbourg, the summer I graduated. I worked a sports camp up in the Poconos called Top of the Poconos. Okay. And there was two camps in one. One was a sports camp that I was a director. The other was a basketball camp. And so the top coaches in the country would come in, give clinics, stay, stay a week or two, this, that, whatever. So at night I'd get a chance to hang around with Bobby Knight, mm. Coach K, Lou Conaseca, uh, wow, from St. John's. Very, very famous names. Uh, Bill Foster from Rutgers. Yeah. Okay. They were my they they were my partners in crime. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, uh, yeah. Chris, uh, you know which one to put up now. Do you remember that incident? Oh my God. That's He's the famous. Can you tell throwing, us about uh, that? This is Bobby Knight uh, losing his cool again and throwing a chair. In, a, in one of the games. It was, uh, that was against Purdue, actually, and he had gotten a technical, and he walked back, and he grabbed the chair, and he threw it across the floor. And, uh, and uh, he, that, that was the most infamous, fa famous moment of his career. That, that, and anybody that talks about Bobby Knight. There was another uh, <laughs> uh, Big Ten coach that was worse than that. It was Woody Hayes. Uh, the head coach for oh, yeah. uh, Ohio State. Maybe he tripped the and guy in, in the game. Yeah, in, the, <laughs> in a bowl game, uh, an opponent was, was running for a touchdown past him, and he, and he tripped them. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, actually, on campus uh, in, uh, uh, in Indiana, they have a, a, a memorial Bobby Knight chair-throwing contest. The students do. <laughs> it's, 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 Bobby uh, rec recently uh, uh, passed, passed, yeah. passed away. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you did you did hobnob with a lot of very very famous people. Oh, uh, that's just the beginning of it. I I I, I realized <laughs> realize that. So so kind of let's uh, we we're, we're st kind of starting to run short a little bit on time. So let's uh, let's get to um, a little fast forward. Uh, now you went on to get your your master's and doctorate. Uh, Degrees and you you started to get into tennis and you were quite a tennis uh, uh, a player. Well, at first at the University of Maryland, where I was doing my doctoral work, I was the strength coach for the University of Maryland basketball team, and I was also an IBO basketball official and a FIFA soccer official. I mean, um, so soccer official. 
And one day, uh, about a mile from campus at Northwestern High School, I was officiating a junior high game. Yeah. And this one kid stood out immediately within two minutes. Yeah. Lenny Bias. Oh, boy. Yeah. He played soccer. No, uh, basketball. Basketball, yeah. Ba yeah ba ba basketball. Right. Yeah, and he was, he was drafted by the Celtics, right? Right, and then, then did, there was an overdose and he passed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a horrible, horrible situation. Um, and oh, yeah, I got into tennis. Uh, um, now, you ran a club. Of, after of I left own, right? uh, Maryland, I went and I got uh, uh, certified by Dennis Vandermeer, who was a fabulous teacher uh -huh. of, uh, of the game. I opened up my own indoor tennis club in Columbia, Maryland, called the Tennis Loft. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the, 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 the most famous person that people around here know that played in my club was Casey Jones. Oh, okay. He was, he was a next-door neighbor to my administrative assistant. In fact, I lived only a mile from him. Was Casey uh, a good uh, tennis well, player? Well, what was funny is, you know, he never played before, so... And he comes to play my assistant, and, and she could play. Yeah. And um, he played uh, tennis just like he did basketball, all defense. He uh -huh. would simply run to the ball, block it back. Run to the ball, block it back and, until she got frustrated and, and would make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. So, uh, and um, – uh, now, what happened to the what happened to the the tennis club? There, how long did that last? Uh, uh, that lasted about five years, and uh, then um, it was in warehouse space. Um, I also I also took out additional space and did indoor soccer. I was only the second indoor soccer facility in Maryland at the time, and the Washington diplomats. Uh, would come up from Washington and uh, uh, practice in my club, and because I, I would I would officiate their games since I was a FIFA. Uh, now, this was soccer. Or soccer. Or soccer. Now that must have been a pretty big indoor space to to house a soccer field. Or was it? It was a smaller field. Than it, indoor? It, it, it was smaller. What? It wasn't a whole field. It, it was yeah. a much smaller area. It was the size of a tennis court. Oh. Okay. So but they were able to scrimmage and do the dribbling and, and shooting. And uh -huh. since it wasn't such a big facility, I didn't have to do a lot of running. I would just <laughs> blow my whistle in. <laughs> uh, so uh, now uh, you're, you're in Columbia, Maryland. And then so don't so, forget Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Well, tell us about Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Okay, well. Going back, going back to Strasburg when I was in college, uh, I received a, a $600 scholarship to study in the area of special needs kids. Mm -hmm. So when I was down in Maryland, um, right after my doctoral work, I uh, had a chance to volunteer my time when she was starting her programs. This was at Sherwood High School in Montgomery County, which she only lived a couple of miles away from. So Saturday mornings we'd show up. She had the straw hat, the lanyard, her clipboard, and you would think she was a, you know, a physical education <laughs> a coach for years, barking out things, so forth and so on. So, I was closer to Eunice Kennedy Shriver than I am to you. Unbelievable lady. Yeah. Now, now, let me hold you up. In case some of our viewers don't realize who she was, tell us who Eunice uh, Shriver was. Eunice Kennedy Shriver married, uh, was one of the Kennedys. Kennedys, right. She married... Sergeant uh, Shriver. Sergeant Shriver, who right. started the Peace Corps. Peace Corps, right. And uh, that and was about 62, 63? Yeah. And then um, the Kennedy family had a retarded girl. Right. And so there was, you know, a lot of feelings in that area. So Eunice decided to start the Special Olympics 
Yeah. And she which was, is which is still going on to this day. So yeah. Now let me let me uh, let the me. The only have, other charismatic person that hold I would, up, hold on. I think I have it, uh, Chris. Let's put up the last image, and you can tell us who this is. Gentle Henry Cabot Lodge. And okay, for when I was in high school, I was a playground instructor at the Cove. Yeah. And in the afternoons, we were assigned a beach yeah. to assist the lifeguards. Right. So I went down to Brackenberry Beach right. and uh, Gordy Reed, the really good athlete from Beverly High, was a lifeguard. And every once in a while, we would look over towards Endicott College and Gordy would say to me, go help Henry put his boat out. <laughs> so, now so between Endicott and Brackenberry, it was a white boathouse, and that property up behind it was Henry Cabot Lodges. So I'd go down, and I got to be good friends with, with him. Unbelievable guy. He was about 6'5", low voice, very good looking, and just well, he unbelievable was, yeah. statesman. And just so our audience knows, he was a senator from Massachusetts. He was who beat him um, to the Senate? Yeah. Who 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 knocked him out of the Senate? I don't know. Kennedy. 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 Okay. Well, he actually ran as a as a vice presidential candidate with Nixon, and right. he was beat out by John Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson. But he he served in the administrations of Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, and Ford, and he was actually a presidential contender in '64. Um, he was ambassador to Vietnam in yes. the war, uh, 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 especially asked by, he was a Republican, but he, he was asked specially to do right. that by Johnson. Uh, Chris, let me ask, what, how much more time do I have? It says 40 seconds here. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up. But Bob, you promised to sing a song as we go out. So sing a song as we go out. My guest uh, has been Bob Butterworth. And sing your song. Okay, in these turbulent times, um, one of my favorite songs, Never Let Walk Alone. When you walk through a storm, Keep your head up high And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of the storm Is a golden sky And the bright silver song of a lark Walk along through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll Thanks for inviting me. And I'd like to uh, remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.